ladies, thanks for watching today. I have Amy Imbo here with me, and we're just in my backyard. And Amy's just going to share a little bit about um, what God has been teaching her over um, these last little bit, uh, especially through this COVID. So, Amy, you've attended Emmanuel for just about two years or so, you were saying. And okay, so tell us a little bit about your family. Sure. Well, Marcus and I have been married for 23 years. We have three children. Sarah is 20, Matthew 17, and Emily is 15. We moved to Vernon from Armstrong about six years ago. And I'm a teacher with Chris Heritage Christian Online School, and Marcus is uh, employed at Walmart. Okay, so how specifically has your family been affected during COVID? Well, our family's always been a little bit unusual, and the effects of COVID uh, on our family has been uh, kind of different than for most folks. Whereas many people have had to start working from home, my husband had to stop working from home and uh, go and work outside of the home. Marcus uh, was self-employed for nearly 20 years and he worked from home for over a decade. I've been working at, from home too for the last 17 years and we homeschool our kids. So we've all been home together for quite a long time. And that worked out quite well for us because Marcus and I are each other's best friends. Right. And I, I think that's uh, very key to uh, your relationship, your marriage, whether you work from home or outside the home, just to be each other's best friend. Marcus's line of work had him arrange uh, loads of glass coming to BC from the States. However, when the borders closed, there was no movement of glass. And that's the borders from the US to Canada? Yes. Okay. So then when they, the, bar, the border started opening up for uh, essential services, there was still no loads coming up and because drivers just didn't want to travel down to, into Washington for various reasons. And Marcus, he waited it out for as long as he could, um, but he realized that he would have to shut down his business and have to go and work outside the home. So he applied for a job at Walmart and he's been working there ever since. So those are some pretty significant changes mm -hmm. that affected your entire household. So um, why don't you share with us a few of the adjustments that your family had mm -hmm. to make through the transition? Yeah. Well, first off, it's been very hard getting used to Marcus not being at home. And I really miss his companionship. And it's been a time of grieving for the loss of his business and that extra time together to yeah. I think it's been very difficult for him to face the reality of having to shut down his business and being self-employed and then go, go to work outside the home and for somebody else. But Marcus is so incredibly humble that you wouldn't even know that it bothered him as much as it does. And we were also very concerned about our finances since his new job would not be paying nearly as much as uh, w when he was self-employed. However, God has taught, if God's taught Marcus anything over the years, being self-employed, it would be trusting him with our family finances. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those are, those are some uh, b big uh, transitions that you guys have, have had to go through. So how have you seen God's faithfulness through this time? God has just been so faithful to us. In the early years of our marriage, we learned that it's the hard times that strengthen us both in our marriage and in our relationship and faith in God. The, and that truth has just been even more evident to us throughout the past year and a bit. Before Marcus shut down his business, a school friend got in touch with him and helped us to make some changes with our finances to lessen that burden. And one of the biggest changes was uh, cutting our mortgage in half. And that was an incredible blessing yeah. for us and the perfect timing. Yeah. And then after uh, Marcus was hired by Walmart, it didn't take them long to promote him to a oh, department neat. manager. Yeah. yeah, so that you know came with a slight pay raise. And then we we also get uh, twenty five or twenty percent off uh, our bill every or once a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's been quite helpful for us too. And we've received some financial support from other sources. And then my school has been incredibly generous to our, us teachers this year. And shutting down the Marcus's business has kind of forced him to get out and look for other career opportunities. Okay. And he's always been interested in finance. So he got in touch with his friend who helped uh, us reduce our mortgage. And that started, uh, he started training as a financial advisor. And he just oh. found out recently that he passed all exams oh, and uh, he's now licensed. Yeah. So that's really good. 
God's also been faithful to us with his word and bringing us tremendous encouragement through scripture. The passage that has been very reassuring for us is Matthew 6, 25 to 34, where Jesus tells us not to worry about anything and that we don't have to worry about what we will eat or drink or what we'll wear because God will provide for our every need. I also think that passage encouraged Marcus to step out into what he believed God was calling him to do right now and just to obey him and that God will just, he will take care of everything else. God knows exactly what we need and um, what, each, what each of us needs. And when we seek him and his will for our lives, then he will provide for our every need. We don't need to be worry or, or be, we don't need to worry or be anxious, yeah. no. but we can be very joyful. Yeah, those are some really great reminders of the truth of God's word. So then as you've kind of traveled over this last little bit and you've kind of walked this journey with Marcus and your family, so what would be um, maybe some words of advice that you'd give to other wives? You know, well, their situation yeah. might be different, but yes. there's probably lots of um, things that you've learned that you could pass on to other women. Mm -hmm. Well, being supportive and encouraging is so important in marriage, especially in these uncertain and ever-changing times. I made sure that Marcus knew that I was not disappointed in him for shutting down his business. And a few weeks ago, Marcus um, thanked me for not complaining about all these Oh, changes yeah. and things and uh, he's the one that has to get up at 4 a.m. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of caught me off guard. Yep. And also never stop praying for your husband. I've always believed that if I'm not praying for Marcus then I have absolutely no business complaining or criticizing him. So just turning to prayer that, and remembering that has just compelled me to keep turning to prayer for him and instead of becoming irritated. Yeah. And change is inevitable in marriage and in life. So being supportive and encouraging, as well as keeping prayer at the forefront and trusting God's faithfulness will go a very long way to helping uh, you and your husband stay close to each other as you walk through these challenging times. Yeah. Those are some really great reminders from God's Word. And I thank you for taking this time to share this story um, and the things that God has, has taught you. And I just trust, ladies, that this is an encouragement to you that um, as you remember the verses that Amy shared about, you know, God's provision and God's faithfulness, that you would be encouraged. And as she challenges us to be praying for her husband, I challenge you to be praying, to, to take that challenge seriously, to pray for your husband, to thank God for your husband. Um, I would just trust that you would um, seek um, God in, in all the situations that you're faced with. So. Thanks again, Amy. Thank you. And um, yes, thank you.